Um, all right, so I'm so excited for you all to join us tonight. Um, I've been really excited for this Zoom. I think it's very much needed. And, um, you know, Ashley and I are really excited to share um, our expertise um, in this field and what we've learned over the past almost two years and, um, you know, what we found. That's crazy, isn't it? Um, what we found to kind of be the best way to go about advertising on Facebook. The best way. That's what this is called, anyway. Um, so, anyway, it's going to be kind of short and sweet and to the point. So, I hope you guys like it. Ashley? Yay! All right. So, um, yeah, Rachel and I, we have kind of been listening to all of you guys and see, we wanted to know what is it? Like, what is it? Where's the disconnect there? So, we went and we looked at some of your pages and we found some um, similarities with some people that were struggling and some powerful. Um, points that stuck out to us and people that were really thriving in this business. So one of the main things that I noticed, I'm going to first focus on some of the things that I'm noticing people are doing wrong. <laughs> um, so sharing, um, sharing things on Facebook. Now that can be if you are hitting share on your upline or a sideline ambassador's Plexus post, um, that's a huge no. The main reason for that is that people want to hear from you directly. But also, you never know what that person's um, privacy settings are, or maybe you do, and it's just set for their friends only. So your network's not even going to see that. That's like the big one right there. But also, um, shared posts do not get interactions like um, if you post it personally. Like it's, it's just, I don't know why, it's just the way Facebook is. Um, so if I were to share a post, um, it's going to get like three likes. If I go and post something myself, it's going to get a lot of likes, a lot of interaction. That's because I've built my network, um, my social media presence, and it's very intentional. So this is not just like a luck. This is not um, you know, anything like that. So the other thing is not just Plexus posts. You can't share Plexus posts. We want you to save those and post them yourself, but also like funny videos. So say there's an adorable kitty cat or something is super comical and you're like, oh my God, this is so funny. What do I do if I find something hilarious? I'm gonna send it to Rachel in a private message. <laughs> she just has to deal with it. And I'm like, look at this, it's so funny. But my network doesn't care. They don't wanna see that and all that's doing is if I have a ton of posts that I'm posting every single day and the majority of them are shares, number one, my people aren't gonna see it, but Facebook is gonna go, people don't need to see your stuff. And then no one's going to see any of my important, really great posts either. So no sharing. Okay. Just none. Don't share funny videos. Don't share Plexus videos. Um, there is two exceptions of things that you can do and times that it is acceptable to share. So we have our fabulous shareables that Plexus has given us in our back office. It's underneath the tools. Um, it's on the very top bar there. It says tools and you can click there on the shareables for our brand new project edge and a reformulated block. So those are fabulous tools there to use. But, um, so yes, utilize those. Those are compliant. They're always perfect. They are great. Um, and make sure that you are going to your personal back office and getting those shareables yourself. Because in those shareable uh, tools is your website. It's embedded in there. So if someone goes to your social media and they click on that shareable link for Edge, it's gonna take them to your website and directly to have them be able to buy edge directly from you. If you were to go to my page and go, oh, I love the information that's in our back office and you hit share on mine, you're sharing my website. Don't do that. You want the sale, not me. <laughs> um, the very last exception with sharing is if there is something that um, most likely videos, um, most of the time videos you cannot share, the, you can't save those and post them yourself. So sharing is the only option. If it is a super powerful video, um, something that you know is going to resonate with your network, something that you really feel that people want um, or need to hear, then that's a perfect opportunity to use that share button and you know do it that way. That's fine. That's perfect. Um, but if at all possible, share it yourself or you know, like post it yourself. Excuse me, post it yourself. Another another exception is, um, and I do this maybe like once a week max like not all the time um but if there's just something so hilarious that i have to share it because i'm very much a like bubbly like, like to make people laugh um or 
you know, like Ashley said, a video that you can't save and share yourself. Um, I, I will do that. Um, like last week it was, uh, I think it was like a picture of Kim Kardashian, like making it rain. It was like every time I go to Target, I was like, well, I mean, it's true. And I knew that my network would think that that was funny as well. So like that's kind of an exception to the sharing rule. But just like Ashley said, oftentimes um, I, I just see people sharing so much on Facebook. Like I, I followed this one person for a while and, um, I like her stuff kept coming up in my newsfeed and she shared so much stuff that it, Facebook like condensed it all into one. It was like click to see 10 more. <laughs> um, and it was like just all just random like pictures and videos, like stuff that she should be pinning on her Pinterest or sharing to, um, like her best friends or something. So make sure that you're not doing that. It'll clog up your timeline. It'll clog up your page. People won't see your stuff. Um, it's just not a good idea. Um, so like Ashley said, make sure that if you see something that like, uh, something that I'm really into that, um, a person that I follow is like, I think it's some sort of breastfeeding page. So it's something I'm really passionate about. And if they ever have a a post like a graphic that they share and I really really like it instead of just hitting that share button and sharing it with my friends I'll just um, save the photo and it has like their logo on it. it's not like I'm just stealing their stuff um, but like I'll save the photo and post it myself because people like Ashley said are going to see that more um, Facebook just the way their algorithms work they're not going to see it as much if I share it and that's going to count as one of my um, like informational or educational posts which we're going to talk about in just a second um, which actually leads into it perfectly because that was my last point um, so with balance so this kind of goes hand in hand with like not sharing so much but um, another common thing we're seeing with people who say I don't get a lot of interaction on my Facebook page whether it's you know, even if it's personal or Plexus, like I don't get anything, people aren't interacting with me. Um, they usually don't have a good balance with their posts. So if you go and look at anyone who is super successful with the business, you are going to notice that we have lots of personal posts because it is still our Facebook. Yes, it's our business platform. And yes, we're very conscious about what we share, but we make sure that we don't, um, overload and spam our friends, which is Plexus all the time. Plexus, 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 Plexus. Um, it's okay to be a crazy Plexus person, but within moderation, um, you're still you, your friends still want to see your stuff. Um, they still want to see your kids, your life and everything. So I know when we start off, especially in the beginning, we're super passionate about Plexus and we just want to tell everybody about it all the time, but you're going to scare people away. They're going to hit the unfollow button and they're never going to see anything you post ever again. So don't burn those bridges. Um, but also just know if you have. I did it in the beginning too, and I've made a comeback, so we're okay. Um, you can definitely make a comeback. Um, so with balance, this is kind of the general guideline that I do for myself and what I tell everybody else. So if you post like three times a day, one of those needs to be personal, one of them needs to be informational or inspirational, and one of them needs to be a Plexus post. Um, and we're gonna give you some examples um, here on in a little bit, but um, this is just a general guideline. Like m more so I should talk about percentages. <laughs> like um, I like doing the, the 30, 40, 30 rule. So I do like 30% informational or inspirational, 40% personal and 30% Plexus. Like no more than 30% of your post should be about Plexus guys. Like that is, max in my opinion um we also don't want it to be one percent but you know find a good find a good medium for you find what works for your network um all right let's see what else yeah um spread posts about plexus oh yeah spread them out that's what i'm trying to say with that so don't do plexus posts back to back um when you are posting, make sure like, oh, you have a really good one um, that you just saw that you want to share, but you just made one like a couple hours ago. Um, just save it, you guys. Like save it in the notes in your phone. Screenshot it. Send the link to yourself in Messenger. However it is that you do it, save it. And then like post it tomorrow or the next day. Okay? Like make sure you're spreading them out. Like I know it's exciting, but you can save it. Oh, excuse me. Um, and then Ash, you want to talk about some images real quick? Yes. Okay. So, um, through Facebook, there is an option to click up in the right hand corner of most phones and it will pop down with a save image. Um, that is a phenomenal way to not reinvent the wheel and not have to uh, create all these graphics and, um, or find great product, uh, pictures, things like that. But 
if you see in your phone or on your computer, when you open up that image, if it is grainy, if it is hard to read, if it's not very clear what it is, if it doesn't look like you could have created it yourself, you know, quality wise, you need to find it again. Okay, you can create it yourself. You can um, search. Typically, a simple Google search will, with um, choosing your words wisely and you know doing a good search with it, you can typically find it. Or even just doing it on Facebook because the original person that made it, you may be able to find that image and then save it there. And if it even goes as far as you find an image, it looks clear on your phone. You post it with a great caption that you made personal to yourself, you know, your network knows it's coming from you, and then the image just uploads grainy, it looks, looks unprofessional, it doesn't look good. Go ahead and take the time, delete it, and find the image, it's worth it for your business. It is, it just shows, um, I don't know, it just looks more professional, it looks more classy, um, and it shows that you care. Um, cause there's nothing worse that I see an image and it's all blurry and I'm like sitting there like squinting at it, trying to read it. <laughs> like, what is that? I have to know what it says. And then I'm like, oh, this is frustrating. So you want it to be, always be a positive experience around your page. Um, so yes. Okay. We have. So um, what I want to mention with that, Ashley, um, is when you are, you know, posting anything on Facebook, I, not just your Plexus post, you really want to focus um, and make sure that it's aesthetically pleasing. Um, make sure that when people are scrolling through that they're, it's going to be easy for them to read. Like, you know, when you're scrolling through your Facebook news feed, like certain things stop you and certain things don't. So even if it is a cute picture of your kid um, and you're like, oh my gosh, I have to share this with everybody. It's a good personal post. Um, make sure that it's pretty to look at um, and like the way that you can do that. I take pictures all the time in Charlie's room and it's really dark in there because of the way the windows are. And so I oftentimes have to go in Instagram or any other sort of like um, photo editing. editing. Yeah. Uh, app. And I have to brighten it. I add a filter. Um, I spend way too much time choosing filters for photos. I'm going to be honest, but it's important to me. Um, it's important that my photos look aesthetically pleasing. So when people are showing through, they're like, oh, wow, that's so pretty to look at. Like, this is also conscious, of course. And then they, like, stop and they actually read what you wrote. I mean, this goes for anything, whether it's, you know, for Plexus or personal or informational. Um, oftentimes, I like to even make my own graphic uh, for most things because I'm just – I, I want it to be me. Like sometimes I still stuff from other people because it's perfect. But oftentimes I just want to make my own. So I personally use the app WordSwag. Um, Ashley, what do you use for Android? Um, they actually have WordSwag now, and that was my favorite on my iPad. I used WordSwag, and I would literally sit down during my work time and create some images before. But now I don't have to do that. It's on my phone, and it's super easy. Um, another option is PhotoGrid. It does have a few um, text options, and you're just going to have to either take a picture or find a picture that you like. They don't have a ton of backgrounds that I would use for a business. They're a lot more cheesy, but you can add in personal photos and put um, text over it. So um, photo grid is an option. There's a couple of different grid type options that you can do, but word swag is absolutely the best. Um, it's so yeah. easy to use and it's only a few bucks. It's yeah, it's, it's, it is a couple dollars. It's not free, but it is a, it's a tax write off and B it's worth every single penny you will put into that. Um, they have so many backgrounds. You can like do a search, um, and like get another one that they don't have and you can do all these different texts and colors and invert it. And it's awesome. That's what I use for like all the time for everything. Um, what I, uh, yeah. Um, do you want to show them the pictures? I think you have one of Charlie and one of Gunner so they can see how we've li lightened those pictures and kind of use those for them. Yes, I do. Um, one last thing I want to mention, if you're making a graphic, make sure that it's easy to read. Um, make sure that the colors don't blend too much. So like if you have a light background, don't use white. If you have a dark background, don't use black. If you're using gold, make sure it's, you know, you can see it easily and read it easily and make sure that your um, font is also easy to read. And I know that they have really pretty fonts and they're fun to use, um, but make sure, especially if it's for your timeline, that it's at least easy to read. Okay, so yeah, um, we like took some screenshots and downloaded some images of stuff that um, we felt would be good to give examples with. Um, so let's see. Let's start off with what not to post. So I find that oftentimes when I started and when other people start, they go to Pinterest, they go to Google, they type in Plexus and they're like, Oh, this looks good. Okay. Don't do that. Okay. So I'm going to, I just went to Google on my phone and I screenshotted, 
um, what it was. So can you see that, Ashley? Yes, I can. All right. So this, don't do any of this, okay? It, first of all, it's throwing up pink and kind of makes me want to barf. <laughs> um, but second of all, it's salesy. It's, no one wants to see that. It, it just looks like a billboard. It's not personal. It's cheesy. Um, and most importantly, like 99% of it isn't compliant. Um, okay, let me go to my next one. Let's see. While you're pulling that up, I'm going to um, elaborate a little bit on compliancy. So yep. you, your, anything that is on your images has to be compliant. You cannot make any promises. You cannot make any medical claims. Um, you cannot talk about how much money you make specifically. There are lots of different compliance red flags. But um, it's not even just the images. Your verbiage also has to stay compliant. So anything you type out, that includes hashtags. Please don't say Candida Killer in a hashtag. That's not compliant. That's not what we're doing there. So you have to be very clear with it. If you want a hashtag for myself, I'm doing Gut Health Babe. That's my domain name. That's for me. That's fine. That is what we're doing here. We're trying to help people have a balanced gut flora um, and digestive tract. We want it to be on track. So those type of things are fine. But if I were to throw out any medical name in a hashtag, that's not compliant. Do that. Um, if I were to make any promises in a hashtag that's not compliant, don't do it. Um, so I just want to kind of, you know, bring that to your attention. What we post really matters. Um, I will be the first if I see something that you're doing that's not compliant. Um, know that I do it in love. I will send you a message and um, I will give you a heads up about it. If it's not taken care of and someone else sees it, compliance will be notified of it. Um, I'm not a tattletale. I won't do that to you guys. I will come to you and we'll work through it. But um, this is serious. It is serious that we follow compliance as rules. It's for our own safety. And I'm so excited about all of the different things that they're offering with the Plexus Way information. Sorry, I'm on a little tangent there. <laughs> You're fine. Okay, so in, in my Google search, I came upon the worst one. And I wanted to share with you guys. Oh, wait. I don't see it. What are you seeing, Ashley? It, Plexus Pink. Do you or a loved one struggle with the following? Oh, yeah. So much pink. Um, yeah, so this is not, um, yeah, don't, don't do this. Okay. I, it's not compliant. So people are going to see that and keep scrolling. They're like, why the crap is she posting that stuff? Also, those are old images. It is important that for our fast relief line, they're so pretty now. Make sure you're not using any old pictures. We now have a gorgeous blue bottle. Don't use that old stuff. Yeah. Um, actually even a wrong named product. It's no longer called fast relief nerve. It's just nerve. So, you know, make sure those type of things you're up to date with that. If you're not sure, check your back office. That will always be up to date. Mm -hmm. No one's to see that. Okay. So now I'm going to, let's see. I wish I need to figure out a better way to do this. Next time I'm going to make a slideshow. I'm going to do it that way, but I do that this time. Okay. So I'm not going to show you any personal posts because you can go to our timelines and you can look at those and you can see what I mean. But we're going to give you some example of some informational um, posts as well as some of our Plexus posts that we thought um, were good examples. Um, so I'm going to start off with like an educational post or in, you know, informational, whatever. So this is one of Ashley's. Um, is that the right one? It's not. Yep. Okay. It yep. So with this post, um, somebody down at the bottom, they have their stamp on it. They still get credit for it. The imperfectfamilies.com. Um, this spoke to me so much that I wanted to share it. It's um, both, it's, a, it's an educational post and I took it and then I, instead of hitting the share button, I saw someone else had shared it. I then took, um, I saved the photo, I uploaded it myself and I put my own caption with it. Um, and that's what we want you guys to do. We want you to be a person of influence and by sharing educational things that you are personally passionate about. Now, not every one of you could post this image here. That wouldn't work for you. It wouldn't be educational if you just post it because it wouldn't be um, relevant to your life possibly. Some of you, go ahead, take it. It's a great image. Go ahead and share it. But um, uh, that's that's what we want you to do is sharing educational posts. Yeah. This is a great example of it. This is something that is um, really in, important and something that Ashley's passionate about. And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come to that here in a little bit, but I'm about to share something that I'm really passionate about. One of the one of the things, and this is an informational post that I did that got a lot of action. Okay, so this is talking about the snowball effect of interventions during birth, and I'm very passionate 
about birth and doing it you know, safely in the best way possible for mom and baby. And so this is something that I shared again. I saw someone else share it. I saved that photo and I reposted it and um, I made it public. And so it, people sh shared it um, and it made its way around and you can see how many likes and shares and comments it got there. And that was a really good way for me to share information about something I'm passionate about. But it also was really good like for me networking. I got some friend requests from some like-minded people. Um, of course, I checked them out, made sure they weren't weirdos or anything. Um, but that was a good way uh, for me to go about doing that. Yes, and that one thing I want to mention with that is that worked so well because she was tailoring that post to her network. The people that she's chosen to network with, the people she's cho choosing to um, hang out with and be friends with, they're interested in those things, or at least they respect it because of who she is and it's important to her. Now, if it had just been um, any other amazing post that someone else could have potentially gotten a thousand likes for, it doesn't matter if it's not something that her network is going to respect her for sharing or that her ne network is interested in. So that's very important to find. Yes. And who you are. We'll go into that more. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to kind of get going and we're going to show you some, uh, oh wait, here's an inspirational post. Um, I do these all the time. If I just find something that really speaks to me, I will share it, um, but this was one that I just really liked. Uh, it was, I can't even see it on my screen. It says, I just want to travel, get paid for doing something I love, be around genuine people yeah. and ways to love the same man over and over. Yes. Aww. And so, yeah, I mean, I loved it. And, you know, that may not fit you and that's fine. You know, make one that does fit you. But it really, really spoke to me. And it was something inspirational that whether it was plexus or related or not, people are going to like that. And um, so, yeah, that's just something, an example of an inspirational post that I did. And again, I saw someone else share it and I just saved it and shared it myself. Um, okay. So now for some plexus. Yes. Um, here's one that Ashley did the other day, um, that I really, really loved. And you can see, I mean, it's aesthetically pleasing. It's eye catching. You see the pink, you see the edge. It's very good at advertising the products. Um, and then her caption is just on point. It's compliant. Um, this is a really good way to do a plexus post without being salesy or annoying. Okay. On to the next one. All right, let's see. Here's one that I did um, when we were on our flight to Vegas. Um, I, my kid was up um, really, really late. It was, I was really sore. And I, this was just real me right then. Um, and I just felt, I was like, this is a perfect plexus post, time to share, because this is real life. It's not me trying to sell something. It's just me talking about products that I love and why they help me. And I didn't make any um, claims. I didn't, you know, it wasn't non-compliant. And people like that, it's personal, but it's also a plexus post. And they're going to respond to that so much better than anything else I could have done just sharing about the products in general. Yes, and I love that you kept it really short. You didn't go into details on why um, Ease was helping you or why Slim was, it doesn't matter. People know, and if they don't, it, it leaves them hanging a little bit, and they're like, ooh, what is this? And they're going to message you, or they're going to go stop yeah. you and find information on your other posts, and that's perfect. Yeah, they can ask me. I'll, I'll tell them in a message. Um, okay, let's see. Here's one. Um, that I liked that I did a good while ago. It just showcases block. It was funny. I needed me a freaking crunch bagel. And it was just showing, showcasing the products really without being like, hey, buy this. Um, <laughs> it, you know, just again, kind of speaks for itself. Um, let's see, here's one of Ashley's. I love this one. This is of Sweet Gunner. So Ashley, you wanna talk about this one real quick? Okay, so this was just a real life moment. Um, it just so happened that on Mother's Day, um, Gunnar woke up and he hopped out of bed and in our bedroom is a cabinet full of Plexus stuff, um, except for accelerator and boost. I keep those really up high so that he cannot get those. <laughs> but he pulled up the P96 and the Slim and he said, Mama, I'm going to make this for you. He didn't know it was Mother's Day. It was just super sweet. So I shared that moment and I took the opportunity to bedhead and all you know bed hair it was crazy he's adorable I snapped that picture I posted it got a ton of interaction why it wasn't because of what he was holding in his hand although it was great marketing <laughs> it's that he was adorable and it was the the love in what he did for me and I just shared a little caption of what he was doing for me and people love that they 
they want to see you. They want to see your family. They want to see what it is that you love. And this is everything for that. That that's everything for me all in that one photo. And it's just adorable. I love it. I think it should be uh, incorporate. Uh, I agree. I think it's perfect. I'll have to send, we'll send this video to Tarl and be like, Hey, use this for something. Uh, <laughs> um, but, <God. laughs> and if you, I mean, yeah, it's just, it was perfect. I love it. All right. So here's another one uh, that I did recently. It, I wanted to show this one because it's simple. I didn't have to do anything special or crazy. I was drinking my pink drink. I set it down in the only clean spot in my floor with some good lighting. I even cropped that picture so I got some clothes on the floor. Um, you know, and I, it, it had good lighting. I used the filter um, to make it look a little bit better. And then I just used some easy to read wording um, that fit me. And so this is something that's really simple. You take a picture of your products, Make sure it looks pretty. Add some simple to read graphics. I did this on WordSwag. Perfect. Um, and again, it's yeah. I said super easy oh. to read. Yeah. Perfect. The only thing pink on there was your drink. That is how it should be. <laughs> and we're not against pink. I don't want to tell you, like, make you guys think that. No, it's just that. You it's, don't want to puke it. would have taken away from the pink drink if she had used pink image, or uh, excuse me, the pink coloring for the, uh, the text. Yeah, yeah. And we're not saying that we're perfect, by the way, by sharing these, not by a long shot. It's just these are some things that we thought were really good to share with you guys. Also, we made all the mistakes at the beginning. Um, and I can honestly say they're mistakes. They were. Um, it wasn't just like some bad choices. It was like, oh, I wish I had not done that. But it's okay. It doesn't mean I can. We moved on from that and we learned from those experiences. And we're sharing that with you so that you can pull yourself out of that. Yeah. Not great moment. <laughs> <laughs> so here's another one that I just really like. I didn't do this. Someone else did. I found it on Facebook. I freaking love it. It is just the product showcase with some beautiful fruits and veggies around. This is really good for marketing. Um, it just, you know, it shows people like this is the whole marketing side of it, but oh, it's surrounded by fruits and vegetables. It must be good. Like that is people you'll notice like oh, companies use that all the time. So it's just a marketing tool, but I still really like it. It's pretty, and uh, you can put any caption with it. I think I did. I stole this from another ambassador, actually, on my team. I don't remember which one, but I was like, this is my health insurance. Like, simple, easy, cute, good plexus pose. Um, and then this one we thought was funny, or I did, <laughs> personally. If this fits your your demeanor, I guess, um, if you like to make people laugh, if you think this fits something you would post and say, then by all means do it. It's really funny. It's clean. It got people's attention. Um, like they're like, what the heck? And then they read it. And like, yes, I did hashtag probiofive and biocleanse at the end. But other than that, like there wasn't really much like plexus about it. Like what, what I always tell people is I like my plexus post. I like it to be like a sneak attack that they don't know what they're reading until it's already done. And they're like, oh, crap, I read one of her flexes posts. Um, so <laughs> that's, that's what I like to do personally, my secret ninja attack moves. Um, all right, just two more, and then we're done. Um, this is just one that I made. Uh, I don't want to tell you how long it took me to get the right shot and the right filter, but I was really particular. What, Ashley? I had to put pants on for that picture. I did problems or perks <laughs> you I did I had to put on pants um but yeah I just like took a picture I had to get the right angle of my my computer there um and then I just did a filter and I did shout out to pink drink ambition I can't even see it so I'm just going off memory but um yeah that's do stuff like that it's fun it's cute people like it um and then anyone could actually steal that I guess um if you wanted to feel free it doesn't really if you don't uh, never wear leggings in your life because then people will call you out you gotta make <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, okay, and then this is the last one I'm going to talk to you about. This is a call to action. Um, I didn't mention this before, but I wanted to give an example of it. These are posts that bring a lot of interaction to your page, and um, they, you know, get a lot of comments, a lot of likes, and people that you don't talk to often are going to see it, and it's going to boost all of your other posts in their news feed. I also like to use it like, I'm like, oh, man, that person commented. I haven't talked to that person in a while. I go to their page, and I interact with them a little bit, um, and I use this as a way to even flip my Facebook a little bit, but it also gets me a lot of interaction um, on my page, which for Facebook algorithms, they like your stuff. 
Facebook and say, oh, they need to like it. You know, they need to see her stuff more. Um, so still this one, if you want, have at it. I've done this. I did, this is the actual fight that my husband and I have almost every time we make peanut butter and jelly. So this is like legit um, strawberry. <laughs> Greg goes, no, it doesn't. Um, I've done, I've done like a toilet paper one. This is the actual fight we have. Do you fold or do you crumple it? Okay, I needed Facebook to help me settle that. Um, <laughs> Greg says fold. Um, okay, I think that's the last one I had to share, um, but that was just some examples, and I know we're getting kind of lengthy here. We always say we're going to do it short, and we just talk, so um, last thing that I'm going to end with is just some real quick talking about branding, and I'm just going to do an introduction um, because I have some more info coming on this later, but um, I've been doing some reading and some learning about branding and guys, this is so important. I can't wait to introduce it to you and I've been putting it into effect and it's, it's working. It's, it's great. Um, and so I want to help you guys do it too. But basically if you've never heard the word branding, what it is, um, it's, it's the easiest way to help you make money online. It is branding yourself like businesses brand themselves, what they stand for. Um, you know, like you can recognize McDonald's from five miles away because you know, their colors, you know, yeah, you know, McDonald's isn't a good example. I hate that place. But, um, you know, maybe Honest Company, I don't know, that just popped in my mind. Like, you know their logo. You know what they stand for. They branded themselves. So focus on branding yourself with your social media um, site, whether it's, you know, Instagram or Facebook. Think of people in your life that you want to follow that when their stuff shows up in your news feed, you know who it's from because of what they posted. And you, they always get a lot of likes. You always want to see what they have to post. That's because they branded themselves, you guys. So that's what um, I'm going to focus on teaching guys how to do. Um, I love it because you can build a business around things that you love. Like you don't have to, and you shouldn't, um, try to make your brand what someone else's brand is because it's successful for them. Don't do that. Figure out what it is that's important to you. What is it that you love? What is it that you want to represent? And that's what your brand is going to be. Um, and it also allows you to attract people that want to hear your opinions. They want, um, they want your guidance. They want to hear your story. They want to be your friend um, because they're like-minded. Um, and so it also helps you expand your network in a way that's going to be helpful for you. Um, so there's no good and bad brands. Don't think, oh, just because I'm not like Ashley and Rachel, like they have their brand and mine is nothing like that and mine isn't good. No, like you don't want our brand because you're not us and we already have ours. Um, so it's good for you to have a different brand so you can have a different niche of people and a totally different network. So again, think about what's important to you. Um, there's no good and bad, there's just weak and strong. So I'm actually going to be doing a workshop soon. I have some really cool um, ambassadors helping me out with that. I'm really excited um, and be on the lookout. I'm gonna announce the date here soon, um, but I'm gonna be doing a workshop and then I'll have it available for everybody after the workshop if that's not your thing. Um, but we're gonna be going over um, how to brand yourself and what that looks like. Um, but for right now, in preparation for that, be thinking of five things, five things or adjectives that you want your brain to be. When people think of you, what is it that you want them to think of? What is it that you want to represent? Um, so, you know, they can be adjectives. Like, I'll tell you mine um, that I picked. And this might change. Um, this isn't something that you can do quickly. It's not something you have to think about it. Um, but I did um, cute, confident, knowledgeable natural and outgoing. Okay. That, that just describes me, I think. And it took me a little bit to kind of think of this. I had to reach out to some close friends. Like when you think of me, um, you know, what are, what are some adjectives that you think of? And I kind of took a compilation of everything and it was really nice to hear kind of how other people perceive me. Um, and then also think of five opinions that people will recognize from you. So we don't want 10, we don't want one. I think five is a really good number, um, to give you it narrows it down enough without being too broad. Um, that's what I realized my brain was too broad before. So come up with five opinions that are really important to you. Um, it can be anything. Like something that I mentioned you know, to you guys, I'm passionate about breastfeeding and birth and gentle parenting and you know, all these different things. Um, living a natural lifestyle. Ashley has her important things that they're similar but actually pretty different. Um, think about what's important to you. And it's, it, anything goes um, virtually. So there's not good, there's not bad. So yeah, that's pretty much what I have to end with. Um, but be on the lookout for that. And it's, it's branding's awesome, you guys. And it's really going to help your business. So.
be on the lookout for that. But anyway, Ashley, is there anything else you wanted to add? No, um, I'm super excited about the branding workshops that we're going to be doing. Um, and even if it's something that you're familiar with, I think that you should join in on this and see because I found for myself that um, my brand has shifted from two years ago. Two years ago, I was so passionate about breastfeeding and I'm still a huge advocate of that. But it's no longer where I'm really at. My son is almost four and um, it's not something that is a huge part of my life anymore. So I'm like transitioning into other avenues and it's fantastic. It's so exciting and people are still going to respect that because I've built something off of that already and they know what to expect from me. Um, it's amazing what happens when we are, um, people of influence and that is not to toot our own horn. It's not, it's something that we've worked towards. And so if I share something about that, I'm passionate about Plexus, just like it went along with all those things for me. Mm -hmm. Um, and so if you can have a strong brand yourself then, and it can all, all wrap around to, um, a healthy lifestyle and Plexus and it's all just going to fit together. People respect that you are sharing Plexus. Um, and they're not going to assume that it's just to make money or anything, or it's just like, a a, a fling thing. They're going to know that this is you, this is who you are and they'll respect that. So I hope that these tips are really helpful. The most important thing with all of this is to be yourself. You can't be anybody else. You have to dig deep. You have to work on yourself. You have to do personal growth and development. And there's books and all sorts of things. And Rachel and I are always here to, um, to help push you and hopefully um, help you guys grow. That's our goal here. So yeah. I think, Rachel, did you have anything else? No, that's all. Thank you guys for joining us tonight. <laughs> Bye. All right. Bye.